right, thank you for coming. Uh, this session is going to be over uh, how I survived VP through my Marsha from the Birdhouse in Ocean Springs. Okay. And I was going to ask you first, because normally I don't need a microphone, because I wanted to whisper in a steel mill, but if you want me to use one, I will. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, well, first of all, I want to explain to you, I was not on the radio when I made that sound. It's like I survived VP. It's, I wasn't one of those people on the radio. So, um, and it's so questionable about what you, my shop is open, but um, you take everything one day at a time. And I thought what would be the better thing for me to do would be to show you all, first of all, where we are located and a little bit about area where I live because the people on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi, although you may not have heard about them in the news a lot, like you heard about the New Orleans people, they're very resilient. And um, five years ago, we uh, actually, first of all, if you go to the very top of the Gulf of Mexico, we're located right in that part of the Gulf. So we're partway between Mobile, Alabama and New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, we have 26 miles of continuous white sand beaches where I live. Um, in Florida. Um, but most people skip us to go to Florida. We've got barrier islands that are right off the coast, which makes us a really great fishing spot. Great shrimping where we live. Um, rich in southern history, of course. And, um, so five years ago, on August 29th of 2005, we had an event hit the coast and it changed the world as we know it. I did not have a bird shop then. And um, on August 30th of 2005, what uh, we woke up to was what you're getting ready to look at. <laughs> anyway, we have we have a lot of historic homes on the Gulf Coast. Um, this is pretty much what the entire coastline looked like after Katrina. Um, everywhere you looked, if the houses did stay up, they uh, they came down afterwards. There were 162,000 homes gone on the coast of Mississippi uh, after Katrina, and there was. Uh, another 126,000 homes that were at some stage of disrepair. So the last five years have been spent really basically rebuilding the coast. What you're looking at up here is a picture of the Camille um, Memorial. And now it's, this is uh, an old home that was there and it was replaced by a casino barge on top of it. And these are uh, harbors and what they look like after the storm. And I guess the reason I'm going through all of this is this is the bridge from my town that goes to Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, we're right across the bridge. Well, we were right across the bridge. Um, this is the bridge the morning after the storm to show you the power of water. Um, so what happened about a year after Katrina hit was I was traveling to Gulf Coast one day in the spring of 2006, and there must have been, this is a gentleman just asked me about, this is the post-war home of Confederate President Thomas Jefferson, uh, Jefferson Davis, and fortunately it's one of the few antebellum homes that wasn't completely destroyed. So I was traveling the coast about a year after the storm that following spring, and there must have been a million sunflowers blooming along the Gulf Coast. And it occurred to me that I was not the only one on the coast that lost a bird feeder that had sunflower seeds in it. Normal is a new term for us. It's no more than a setting on your washing machine. Because we don't know what normal is anymore. We're, we're redefining normal. These are our new patio homes. Uh, FEMA trailers followed by the bricks that you could recover from your house. So for some reason, I don't know if people think they can use their own bricks. But it's quite a concept. Kids will be done fishing again by a year later. Um, but a lot of the coast is still in the rebuilding. When I opened my store in 2008, uh, it, people's rebuilding was just about at the point where they were sick and tired of being working on houses and they were ready.
ready to start getting back outside. So we're in the backyard. It's a wonderful time for me to open the birdhouse. Um, the seagrasses started coming back. The coastal birds started to return. They had nowhere to nest for a couple of years because the grasses were all gone. And uh, that's all begun, begun to change again. And um, I discovered because of the amount of sunflowers on the coast that <laughs>
It's not directly on the Biloxi beaches and Gulfport beaches because of the barrier islands. This is a little sampling of what 184 million gallons of oil looks like. This is the... Cater Industrial Supplies, please come up to the checkout desk. These are the the Cater Industrial have. Supplies, please come up to the checkout. Thank you. To contain the oil. Uh, there's so much of it that it's been impossible to contain. It's easy to contain in open water, it's easy to contain on open beaches, but it's very difficult once it gets into the marsh. Why all this has affected me is, and this is a baby loose term that we couldn't get out of the sand. They still make me cry. Um, Ridley turtles. Although you can come to the beaches, and the beaches are fine, you can swim in our waters, you can eat our seafood, um, and I do trust the scientists, this is what the water looked like in June uh, of this year. These are the crabs trying to do their little thing across the oil instead of sand. The black you see here is solid oil on the barrier islands. Um, and you'll notice the missing BP people cleaning it up. Um, <laughs> that's the first thing I notice anyway. Um, Although they have a lifelong commitment to, say, to, to, re, to cleaning the coast, it's they came in with this disbursement, and it sort of, in our in, that, in the naturalist's opinion, might have made matters worse. This is um, the barrier to keep the oil off the beaches, and it also catches dead birds. Um, volunteers, just like after Katrina, have been tremendous. The problem is, and um, any of you that have been in this for a long time understand, you, you can't just raise your hand and go and start cleaning oil birds. It's a it's a lengthy commitment. So what the Audubon Society on the Coast has done is taken all of those volunteers and done a citizen science commitment to devote the next five years to monitoring the uh, migratory birds and our wintering birds. Mississippi and Alabama have joined together and they will be monitoring the birds 